Hello, I'm Robert Horton, a member of the National Society of Film Critics and the Programmer Historian in Residence at Scarecrow Video. In the fall of 2021, I'm again pleased to be leading uh, another session of Scarecrow Academy, an online discussion group presented by the nonprofit Scarecrow Video in Seattle. This series is a continuation of the art in noir, film noir, and the director, so it's part two of that series, we're going to be looking at uh, some classics of the prime film noir era, as well as four titles from the neo-noir phase of, of noir. We're going to present them with an emphasis on the art of the director. You do not have to have in, uh, attended any of the previous uh, sessions to join us. You can jump right in at any point. The series is free. We, it takes place via Zoom on Saturday afternoons at 2 p.m. Pacific time. If you're looking at this on uh, the Scarecrow Academy page, or if you need to find it, you will find some links there. Uh, let Scarecrow know that you're interested and they will email you back with uh, the information of how to join us via Zoom. Our next meeting convenes on Saturday, October 9th, uh, with a discussion of Pick Up on South Street, the 1953 film directed by Samuel Fuller. I'm gonna say something about Fuller and that movie right here and right now. Samuel Fuller was born in 1912. There, there's a wonderful documentary portrait of him uh, called The Typewriter, The Rifle, and The Movie Camera. And that, that title describes the three phases of Fuller's life. He was a precocious New York newspaper uh, reporter when he was still an adolescent, uh, working for tabloids and uh, honing a uh, kind of hard bitten storytelling ability that uh, would serve him in, in uh, then branching off into fiction writing later in the 1930s. Then in World War II, he was part of the 1st Infantry Division, also known as the Big Red One, where he saw incredibly heavy fighting, uh, including at Normandy uh, and including the liberation of concentration camps. And then finally, in Hollywood, uh, he picked up the movie camera and became a director, writer, producer, often working in the low budget independent realm, uh, but sometimes in the studio system as well, including uh, with the film that we were talking about, Pick Up on South Street. So let's keep in mind that uh, Fuller's lives as a uh, reporter and soldier are, I think, very much still in play as a filmmaker. I wrote something about that uh, in uh, a piece I did on that documentary I just mentioned uh, for Film Comment uh, a few years ago. And I'm going to quote something from it here. I start off by talking about um, something that Fuller says in an interview that's included in that, that documentary um, about the, the phenomenon of killing in war. And uh, I said this, his description of what war does to a soldier, a fist inside you that never unclenches. Isn't that of a wounded veteran or a self-pitying neurotic? It's more like a piece of reportage, a fact given a vivid description by a good journalist who has boiled something down to its colorful, um, true, unsentimental essence. This is something Fuller brings to his movies. It's true that in Fuller's films, you often feel like you're smack in the middle of the action. At times, the camera itself is knocked around by its momentum or a fighting actor's shoulder. But you are also detached, which is a quality that isn't remarked on much when critics describe Fuller as a, a primitive or irrational director. Yes, he'll cut between close-ups so intense you feel you're standing in the middle of a two-person meltdown. The opening dust-up from The Naked Kiss can leave bruises. Camera whammies around so much that you can actually see Fuller himself in one shot, yanking off Constant Towers' wig. But Fuller will also shoot the choreography of conflict from far away. The kitchen knockdown dragout in Shot Corridor is covered in a calm long shot. And much of the intricate fighting in Fixed Bayonets is played out on the huge icy set that lets us see the broad, merciless pattern of men being fired upon. That's a reporter's view, watching the scene and getting it down right. That's the end of my rather long quote there. But uh, what I'm talking about is, it, when I when referring to that critical view of Fuller, is that his directing style is sometimes described as primitive, with big, you know, shocking close-ups or, or these inquisitive and even lurid camera movements, and uh, that his dialogue can sound like it's written as a headline or the opening paragraph, uh, a grabber, you know, in, the, in, in a front page story. Fuller's style grabs you by the lapel and it pokes you in the side, but he seems to think with the camera 
in a way that more refined or respectable directors sometimes don't do. Pick Up on South Street is a characteristic fuller, and as a film noir, it has some familiar aspects to us um, of that genre. A hero on the wrong side of the law, uh, a dame who certainly comes on as a femme fatale at first, although I think she turns out to be rather different from that, and a nighttime setting in a, a unique corner of the big city, especially as regards the pickpocket uh, Richard Woodmark and his shack that's weirdly perched out over uh, the water of the harbor. The reporter in Fuller is a much in delightful play here. I think uh, the film has a reporter's sense of things, how that shack works in its own peculiar way, how the system of policing slash informing slash payoffs works, how microfilm works. Uh, Thelma Ritter's character, Mo, gives an explanation of the many different methods of a pickpocket that is uh, partly a primer for the audience. You know, the other film that provides a primer in that is Pickpocket, made six years later by the great director Robert Bresson, who in some ways could not be more different in style from Fuller, uh, but in other ways is, is a brother in the family tree of pure cinema. Now, there, there was a mode of realism in film noir starting in the late 1940s, movies along the lines of, of pseudo-documentaries almost, like uh, The House on 92nd Street or The Naked City or uh, Anthony Mann's fine film, T-Men. But this is not that. That's not what we're talking about here. And nobody would confuse pickup on South Street for realism. This, this is an interest in how things work, how characters operate in this underworld ecosystem, and how that gets animated by style. The film has three splendid performances in the leads. Uh, Woodmark had made a sensational film debut in 1947 in Kiss of Death, playing this giggling psychopath. And he was an expert in playing uh, losers or hustlers that you, you could kind of find yourself somehow caring about in the course of the film, like his, his frantic conniver in Night of the City. Here he's uh, not only got a, got a long rap sheet as a three-time loser, but uh, he, he even refuses to behave patriotically, although it's the midst of the Cold War. Gene Peters is kind of fantastic in this film, uh, an actress who never had a uh, major movie career which might have had something to do with the controlling influence of her husband, a fellow named Howard Hughes. And finally, Thelma Ritter, who is absolutely sublime as the stool pigeon and necktie hawker, who just kind of takes over whatever uh, scene she's in, obviously, I think, very close to Fuller's heart here. Ritter got the film's only Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress, and she lost that to Donna Reed in From Here to Eternity. Uh, I like that movie, and I like Donna Reed, but uh, come on, uh, Ritter obviously deserved uh, the award this time. So we're going to talk about various ideas in the film. We'll talk specifically about how uh, what we mean by directing style uh, in our next Scarecrow Academy session. I will share a memory of the one time I met Samuel Fuller, just, just briefly but vividly, and uh, maybe try to suggest why the critics of Fuller's era were so passionate in uh, champion, championing him at the time. Join us on Saturday, October 9th, uh, as we talk about Samuel Fuller's Pick Up on South Street.